Hi everyone, this is GKCS. In this video, we'll be talking about garbage collection algorithms, specifically in Java, but even if you're coding in Golang or C++ or Python, uh, many of these garbage collection algorithms are applied behind the scenes for some of the libraries that you're using, for example, Elasticsearch. And the second thing is these algorithms are generic. So they're used in Python, they're used in Golang. Uh, it's very, very useful to know about them and how they work so that you can predict the behavior of your systems. Now, part one and part two of this series have already been posted and they were posted two years ago. So we'll have a short recap just to understand things. If you have gone through them and you know them well, you can skip the next minute or so of the video. But uh, yes, there'll be a lot of learning in this video. Okay, for a recap, the first part of garbage collection is garbage identification. What you need to do is identify objects which are dead in memory. So any object which is reachable uh, becomes gray, all right? And when there are no outgoing references to this object, it becomes black. So this is exactly depth first search. Okay, you have things in the stack and objects which are reachable are in the stack. Uh, once they're done processing, there are no more outgoing pointers from that object, it becomes black. And eventually you just have black objects and white objects. All white objects are discarded, black objects are kept. So this is also known as the tricolor algorithm. You have black, gray, and white. You can have any color that you like, but three colors is what you need. Now this algorithm is very efficient. Uh, it is an order n algorithm. It runs through all the objects in memory and tells you which objects are alive. Uh, you can speed this up maybe by using Python's idea of reference counts, but reference counts has its own set of problems. You couldn't have cycles in Python. And so the reference count of all the objects in that cycle can be one. How do you detect a cycle? So uh, this makes the garbage collection process complex. It's not something that Java has gone for. Java has gone for a simple tricolor algorithm. Uh, but they also need to speed up garbage collection because as long as your garbage collector is running, your application is not running. And so very often you'll hear uh, staff engineers talk about this system is having a garbage collection cycle. So why is that so scary? Well, it stopped for the next 10 seconds. Oh my God. So that's pretty big. I mean, all of your requests stopped for 10 seconds. Maybe many failed. Some of them were waiting and then many others came in the, the 10 seconds. So there's a thundering herd problem. So this is one thing that you really, really want to avoid. Uh, that's the reason why you want to understand the garbage collector also well. The three things you can do to speed up garbage collection. The first idea is to look at the patterns of garbage collection and see if you can find optimizations there. And here comes the generation hypothesis. Younger objects tend to die frequently while older objects tend to stay around. So you spend most of your time looking for dead objects in the first few garbage cycles. Eventually, if they haven't died, then you expect them to live for a long time and you move them to an older generation. Here you spend lesser time looking into these objects because the chance of one of them freeing up memory is low. This doesn't work in some cases, for example, caches where older objects tend to die uh, and younger objects tend to live for a while. So LRU caches. We also saw doubly linked lists which could create problems in terms of nepotism. I would again suggest you to go back to the video to get a better idea of how these problems occur and what is being done to solve them. The second idea was to introduce concurrency here. This is a natural step because you have a large graph and you can parallelly or concurrently look at the objects and see which objects are reachable. The problem with this is that if you're running a concurrent process like garbage collector and the application, the application is making changes to the memory while the garbage collector is going through the references. So there could be problems here as we discussed in the previous videos. Uh, around this we found a solution for JIT, which is just in time compiler, injecting some code and making sure that any reference that the garbage collector deems as dead or alive um, has to go through some checks. The third idea that we came up with was to split this entire graph into regions. You have Eden objects in one place, you have old objects in one place, so old generation, Eden, uh, survivor. This idea of splitting a graph into pieces uh, and finding out which objects point where using a card table uh, also helps us speed up garbage collection because one, you have smaller spaces that you're looking into. If most of the objects there are dead, you are likely to find maximum returns by looking into that space. So you split the whole region into spaces. And the second idea was that compaction is easy now because you have, let's say 2048 spaces it's easy for you to collect some of the spaces and move them into a new one. Now we come to the final idea of having concurrent compaction. Concurrent compaction is especially difficult because whenever you're compacting objects into one place, 
you're effectively doing a write operation. You're doing a copy, right? So when you're doing this, it is possible that the application goes and reads this old object when a new object has already been created. Okay, so you may have two copies of the object and you can have dirty reads. As an example, let's think of an object which has these variables A and B and it has a reference also R uh, and it's got some headers. These headers have some information about you know, what type of object is it. So the application is pointing to this object uh, and now the garbage collector wakes up. The garbage collector goes and says, all right, I need to compact things. I need to put all the objects together in one space. You, this object, go over there. Okay, but it can't send it over there. It has to copy it and then go and delete the reference later. So it makes a copy and then suddenly the application wakes up. This is a concurrent program. Remember that you have the GC getting some time, uh, time slice from the operating system to do some job in which case it was able to copy. And just after the copy, the application got a time slice and now it can do something. And what does it do? It makes a change. It makes an update operation. A from minus one became seven. This is a problem because when the garbage collector wakes up, it's going to change the pointer and now a is no longer equal to seven, a is equal to minus one, you have a lost write. Okay, how do you avoid this? This is not acceptable. You will have writes which are being lost by the application. And here you can use the concept of a forwarding pointer. Uh, this is a very interesting idea. You have an object, which is a plain Java object. Uh, the moment the garbage collector wakes up, the first thing it does is it goes and adds forwarding pointers to all the objects. Okay, and initially the forwarding pointer is pointing to yourself. So you are the right object, okay? The forwarding pointer is the source of truth, it's pointing to you, so you're the right object. Now, the application can now wake up and say that, listen, I want to update this value, this field A to seven, but it can't directly update this value. It has to create a copy of this object because you have a forwarding pointer means garbage collection is going on, it's too risky to make this update. I'm going to create a copy of this object and then I'm going to try to update it. But the moment you do that, when you copy this new object, there might be concurrency, there might be another thread which says, listen, I want to update the value of A equal to 20. Okay, so you have multiple concurrent write operations and a garbage collector also running. This is typical standard thing in uh, any, any application. Now, both of them will try to set the value of the forwarding pointer to their respective copy. So the first application is trying to move it to the first copy. The second one is trying to move it to the second copy but only one can succeed. And to do this, you have the concept of locking, which is a compare and swap operation. So one application will win, the other one will lose. The winner gets to make the change. The loser aborts their operation and retries. So on the retry, you'll see that the forwarding pointer is pointing to this fresh brand new object of A equal to seven, update the value A equal to 20 in that. And so you have a consistent worldview. Eventually the garbage collector will wake up and say that the forwarding pointer is pointing to this new object. The other objects can be eliminated. So this way you have concurrent compaction also. Now there are two garbage collectors in Java which do concurrent compaction. One is Shenandoah. It has a single generation. It doesn't believe in the generation hypothesis. And the second one is ZGC. Uh, of course, if you are looking for uh, non-Oracle implementations, then you can also go for C4. What they claim is that it's a better garbage collector than anything out there. Shenandoah and ZGC seem to be heavily inspired, but uh, that's my personal thought. My final comments on this will be the generation hypothesis is useful in most cases. You need to look into what uh, the situation is. If you're using caches, maybe generation hypothesis is not very useful. Otherwise, it's a great tool. Uh, it saves you a lot of looking into. The second thing is concurrency can reduce your pause times significantly. Your application latency will go down if you have concurrent compaction, concurrent evaluation of the graph. Remember that these are still trade-offs. You know what you should do if you have a background process which doesn't have any problems in terms of responding in time? A simple mark and sweep garbage collector. Okay, because concurrency is just going to eat into your throughput and nobody cares about your latency unless you have like hours of latency, that's not going to happen. Garbage collection is a fast process and it usually takes less than a minute. So you can go for the old algorithms. They are going to actually give you more benefits. Uh, having said that though, most of these new algorithms make sense in a production environment with real-time traffic. 
All right, that's all we have for Garbage Collection. Thank you for watching. If you have any doubts or suggestions on this, do let me know in the comments. And also, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.